So it is my pleasure to introduce Arun Ulag, Corporate Vice President of Azure Data. Arun! All right. Thank you so much, Heather. Thank you, Arun. Hey, folks, good morning. I'm absolutely delighted to be here. I'm Arun Ulag. I run all of Azure Data here for Microsoft. You know, I was walking the hallways yesterday, and it was so good to see so many friends. Uh, some friends from the very, very early days of Power BI, you know, when we just launched, and some friends that we've made more recently. Uh, but, I, you know, we are at the home stretch here, folks. This is the final day of the conference. This is the final product keynote. We have a ton of exciting stuff to show you, a bunch of announcements, a bunch of exciting demos, and a whole bunch of things that you can try today. So you guys are excited to see it? Yeah. All right. <laughs> so let's get, let's get started. So just as a quick reminder, I mean, looking at the Power Platform, it's crazy how far we have come. We have a complete portfolio of no-code products that do everything from get insights on your data, build applications, build automation workflows, build chatbots, you name it. And we take a lot of care to make sure that these products work together. They act as one portfolio. Right? And it all started with one product. It all started with Power BI when it launched in July 2015. Okay? And our mission with Power BI has never really changed. It's really about driving a data culture where everyone in your organization can make better decisions with data. Now, Power BI is growing like crazy. It's not only the largest BI platform on the planet, but it's also the fastest growing. What you see on this uh, slide, this curve that you see, is the actual usage growth of Power BI since the day we started. Right? And you can see that it's still growing exponentially. Right? And even those minor dips that you see along the way is typically the December holiday season when a few people can tear themselves away from their Power BI dashboards. <laughs> <laughs> so today we have over 360,000 organizations around the planet, pretty much in every country, 210 countries, tens of millions of business users that use Power BI every single day, every single month. Okay. Now, this includes 97% of the Fortune 500, right? So there's a 3% left that we've really never been able to get to. You know, there's a few, maybe Google, maybe Salesforce. You know, we're trying, <laughs> we're trying. <laughs> maybe one day they'll see the light, you know? <laughs> uh, and which is why when you talk to, you know, uh, the analysts, when you talk to Gartner, Power BI is the clear leader on both axes, ability to execute as well as completeness of vision. Okay. And we've been the clear leader for a while. And if you talk to Forrester, they agree as well. You know, clear leader, closest to the top right. Okay. And this is not just because they talk to me and my product team, it's because they talk to you. So again, thank you for your feedback. Thank you for making us build a great product. So let's talk a little bit about why we're going with Power BI. So we talked about driving a data culture. Now, one of the things that's really, really important for us, and I know it's important for you, is really Power BI Desktop, right? Because Power BI Desktop is the tool that you use to be able to connect to data, build those semantic models, build those reports. And what we always are trying to do is what we refer to as PowerPoint for data. We want to give you amazing capabilities, powerful capabilities that let you quickly get insights from your data, but we want to make it as easy to use in Power BI Desktop as PowerPoint. So we take a lot of care to actually mimic experiences that you already know and understand in PowerPoint, in Excel, so it's very easy for everybody to learn, every, very easy for everybody to use. So do you want to see where we are going with Power BI Desktop? Want to see some cool demos? Yeah. All right. Let's bring Amanda Rivera over. Amanda, show us where we're going with Power BI Desktop. Thank you, Arun. I have tons of really exciting demos to show you today on how we're making it easier than ever to drive a data culture and making creators more efficient. Starting off in Power BI Desktop, our goal, like Arun said, is to make Power BI as easy to use as any Office app, or as we like to say, PowerPoint for your data. And now there's a great example of this right from a user's first click with our new Getting Started experience. This is the same backstage that you would see in any Office app, like Excel or PowerPoint. It gives you one place to go to access all of your reports. I'm going to go ahead and start a new report and get some data. Now you can immediately see that it's not just the Getting Started screen that is getting a facelift, so is our Power Query experience. And this, this home screen that you see makes it easy to access the most common connectors or search directly for the connector you're looking for. And obviously, we also have a very easy way to browse all 175 of our data connectors. 
And we allow you to quickly just paste in a table of data or a query to get started right away. I'm going to go ahead and connect to an Excel file. And then I will just pick a couple of tables. And then from here, you can see that I get this visual representation of all of the data cleaning steps that have happened so far. Not only does this make it easy for me to understand what's already happened, but also makes it really quick and easy to add new transformations from the hundreds that I have available here. And of course, you can easily see that as I make changes to my columns and apply transformations like removing them or renaming them, the view automatically updates as I change those steps. So now let's jump over to a completed model and report. It's never been easier to build beautiful reports like this. We're in the middle of revamping our visualizations, making them significantly more customizable and flexible. For example, our new card visual. It used to be that if you needed to make beautiful KPIs like this, you had to layer like a ton of different components all on top of each other. But now this entire row, including the values and the icons, are all one single visual, which not only makes your report significantly more performant, but also means that next time you, know, you need to go back and add a new metric, it's super quick and easy to do. All I have to do is use our new build icon, and there I go. I have my new metric. And so as you can see, it's also just as easy as in Excel to build your visuals. It was just one click from the build menu to be able to add a metric. And if I wanted to apply formatting settings, I could use the new formatting button to make it as easy as a click to add elements like data labels. And if I wanted to format these data labels, all I have to do is double click, and I can apply my settings right there. What if I wanted to rename the title? Again, as easy as double click, I can just go in there and type whatever title I want. Easy as could be, I don't have to like search for a million options in the formatting pane or jump back and forth between the panes and the visuals. It was all right there. Now, we aren't just making it easier for creators to build content, but we're also making it easier for creators to build good experiences for their consumers as well. Let's take, for example, our Q&A visual. Q&A has always allowed consumers to be able to explore their data using natural language. But for that to be a good experience, it took a lot of work on the creator side to add all these business synonyms to the model. But now we are actually modernizing Q&A by adding generative AI into the mix. So soon, Copilot will be able to generate all the synonyms you need for your model automatically. So you can see here, I asked this question, revenue by director. But I don't actually have a director field in my model. It's called manager. But Q&A was still able to find the right visual. That's because if I open up tooling and check out synonyms, I'm able to see that Copilot was able to pull all of these little syn these synonyms with the little sparkle next to them automatically. I didn't have to do anything. And that included director for my manager column. And this is not the only visual getting a facelift with Copilot. Our new Azure OpenAI Enhanced Summary visual allows you to craft the style and narrative of your report summaries. All you have to do is describe the types of insights you want Copilot to focus on and the style you want it communicated in, like I did here with this description. And Copilot will automatically generate report summaries for you that will help your consumers find and understand their insights faster than ever. And of course, this auto also just updates with cross-highlighting, giving you a, a narrative for that specific data, keeping that same styling you asked Copilot to use. Now, I have, now that I have a finalized report, the next thing I'm going to need to do is obviously share out with my team. And where do most business users share, save and share their files? OneDrive, of course. And as you can see, this file has already been saved directly to my OneDrive. So if I wanted to share it, all I have to do is save my latest changes. And then I'll get the exact same shared dialogue that I would expect from any Office app that allows me to share directly with my colleagues or just copy a link. And if someone uses that link, they'll be able to view that file directly inside of OneDrive. And even though I'm in OneDrive and not the Power BI service, 
just like any other Power BI report, I have the same interactivity that I ex would expect. <laughs> Easy as could be, just like any other Office app. Back to you, Arun. Thank you so much, Amanda. So that's just a taste, folks. That's just a taste of where we're going with Power BI. Now, one of the things that helps us build a great product is not just the ideas that we dream up with, but it's all of you. It's the Power BI community. We have over 2 million members of the Power BI community, over 350 user groups around the world. So who here is part of the Power BI community? Make some noise, folks. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so one of the things that we love to do is listen to you. And the way we listen to you is on ideas.powerbi.com. We just evolved to ideas.fabric.com. Okay. And this is where you tell us what ideas that you want us to work on. You vote on each other's ideas. And that allows us to prioritize the capabilities that matter to you. Okay. Now, if you look at the number of ideas that you've asked us to go build, it's over 33,000 ideas, right? 33,000. So all my team has to do is work on keep building on, on these ideas, and we have employment for life. <laughs> now, uh, you've voted almost 900,000 times to prioritize the features that matter to you. And nothing gives us more pleasure in every semester, in every month, in every quarter to look at the ideas that have the most votes and prioritize them in our roadmap. And so far, we have delivered capabilities that cover almost 300,000 of the 900,000 votes that we put on the table, and we're still working hard at it. Okay. Now, just to give you a sense of all of the capabilities that we shipped in Power BI in the last 12 months, I'm going to let the slide play out. <laughs> now, I'm not going to ex expect any of you to read the slide, but all of these are the features that we shipped over the last 12 months. Right. Every single week, we ship new capabilities in the Power BI service. Every month, we ship a new release of Power BI Desktop. And we've been doing this for more than eight years, and we're not going to stop. Okay. Now, one of the, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to invite Amanda to show you some of the capabilities that we're working on in Power BI that come from you, that come from ideas. So back to you, Amanda. Thanks, Arun. All right, let's take a look. As Arun said, community is at the heart of what we do on the Power BI team. And we appreciate all this feedback you give us because it really does shape our roadmap in very tangible ways. For example, we've heard loud and clear that creators need ways to build semantic models in the Power BI service. This is not just for efficiency, but also to provide access to even more users like Mac users. So now I have access to all the key capabilities I need to modify my models in the web, such as drag and drop to create a relationship. And soon, I'll be able to use the Manage Relationships dialog to be able to view all of the relationships available to me. And of course, we have the bread and butter of model building, creating, and editing measures. But of course, building your model is only one part of the overall process. We've often heard from creators that it's also still too hard to build beautiful reports, which is why we are very excited to announce that Copilot will soon be available to help directly address this feedback by empowering anyone to be able to build beautiful reports. <laughs> so Copilot will help jumpstart your report creation by giving you suggested content for your report, which means that even if you didn't build the model yourself, you will be able to get an understanding of what is available to build your report off of. And you can either use those prompts or craft your own, like I did here, where I put in create a page looking at revenue one, forecast, and pipeline by products, campaigns, and industries. And so then Copilot will look at all of the data that I have in this report and build a beautiful report for me automatically. <laughs> and then from here, I can just customize it as much as I want and then use Copilot to build the next page and the next until I have the perfect report. And Copilot can also help me find insights in my data as well. All I have to do is ask a question about the data on the page, such as which product has the most revenue in the qualify stage. And then Copilot will look at the data and then find the answer and even highlight the visual on the page that was used as the source for that answer. And that's not all. We haven't forgotten about our pro developers either. We've heard the feedback that you need access to more DAX capabilities in Power BI Desktop. That's why I'm excited to show you our upcoming DAX query view, which will allow you to explore your models using DAX queries. 
So for example, here I have a sample query that shows the top 100 rows of my table. And I can run queries off of other tables, any column, or even any measure. And what's interesting about measures is that not only can I evaluate them, but I can also define them and define with references, which means if this measure used a different measure in its definition, I can see the full stack in a single view. And not only can I see it, I can also change it. And then I can go and run it to see if I like the new result. And if I did, I can choose to update it right there to keep the changes I just did. We're also working on your newest DAX pair programmer with our DAX copilot, which return your queries such as show revenue by product ordered by most profitable into query suggestions, which means you can focus less on the syntax and more on building great BI solutions. <laughs> now, I've shown you some really cool and fancy AI demos, but I have something that's going to make many of you way more excited. Yes, that's right. We're working on dark mode for Power BI. <laughs> this has over 9,000 votes in our community forum, and I'm so excited to get this into your hands in just a few short months. All right, that's all I have for you today. Thanks, and back to you, Arun. Thank you so much, Amanda. So as you can see, we take your feedback very, very seriously. I just wanted to recognize and thank the community. You've been a huge part of the Power BI journey. Thank you for telling us what to build. Thank you for using our products. Thank you for keeping us honest. And thank you for telling us when we screwed up. <laughs> so uh, what I wanted to do was just take a couple of minutes to hear from some members of the Power BI community. So let's roll the video. Hello, Power Platform friends. I'm Gregory Petrosian. Hi, I'm Stacy Rudoy. My name is Ian Stewart. Hello, everyone. This is Shabnam Watson. Hey, it's Nicola. I'm Catherine. Power BI has transformed the data analytics landscape. Power BI transformó la forma en la que trabajo con los datos. I come from a database design background. Most of my career has been in reporting with various BI tools. After I started working with Power BI in 2017, it all became so easy and straightforward. Power BI has helped me by being part of this amazing community of professionals. You get to choose your own adventure. And now with Fabric, it gets even better. I can explore areas like data science or go deeper with engineering. Fabric not only will help us design more robust and faster Power BI solutions, but for Power BI developers, it opens up new doors of opportunities. Fabric presents an incredibly exciting prospect, now bringing all sorts of data engineering and data governance capabilities. I'm looking forward to seeing how our investment in Fabric will deliver business context for generative AI co-pilots. Personally, I'm beyond excited to see how Power BI develops under the Microsoft Fabric umbrella and how it will integrate with other Fabric offerings in the future. I'm really looking forward to Fabric and I expect it to change my life even more so. If you are in an operational role and want to become a data whiz, look no further than diving into Microsoft Fabric. Enjoy Microsoft Power BI. Enjoy Microsoft Fabric. Make sure you join the Power BI and Fabric community, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your conference. So why are we working on Microsoft Fabric? Right. So if Power BI puts so much Power BI power in your hands, Fabric is going to take it to a completely different level. We're going to make you folks so productive, give you so many capabilities that allow you to work with your entire data estate. So let me tell you a little bit more about the thinking behind Microsoft Fabric. We know that Gen AI is changing the world. That's pretty much all what customers can talk about today. Pretty much every organization is trying to figure out how they bring the power of generative AI into their data estate. Now, as they work on this, I would say there's good news and bad news. The good news is there's been a ton of innovation in the data and AI space over the last five to 10 years. The bad news is there's been a lot of ton of innovation in the data and AI space over the last five to 10 years because it's created a ton of complexity. Right? Now, this is not a slide that I created. This is a slide put together by FirstMark Capital, a venture capital firm in the Valley. And this is the data and AI landscape. Every tiny icon on the slide is a product or technology in the data and AI space. 
And the complexity is on you. The complexity is on our customers because it's not just an AI problem, it's a data problem. If your data is not ready to take advantage of AI, if you put garbage in, you're going to get garbage out. Which is why when we talk to our customers, when we talk to chief data officers, here's the message that we consistently hear. Please unify. I want to be the chief information officer, not the chief integration officer. Please help me unleash the power of AI in your data estate. This is exactly why we launched Microsoft Fabric. Because Microsoft Fabric, what we're trying to do is give you an end-to-end -end platform that goes from the data lake to the business user that's really built from the ground up for the era of AI. Now, with Fabric, we're doing a number of things. We're going from one component to a unified stack. We're going from a single database or a single data warehouse or a single Power BI data set into all of your data, from an isolated application to your entire estate, from Gen AI needing to be manually wired in to Gen AI simply being st stitched in. With Fabric, we're making four promises. The first promise is to give you a complete analytics platform right, that gives you all of the capabilities that you need as not only BI professionals and business analysts, but data engineers, data scientists, data warehousing people. We will give you all of those capabilities in a unified product with a unified experience, a unified architecture, and a unified business model. And we're delivering all of these capabilities as SaaS, software as a service, just like Power BI. The experiences that you're already used to will translate over. It will pretty much look and feel like Power BI, but give you greatly expanded capabilities. So that's the first promise, a complete analytics platform delivered as SaaS. The second promise is a lake-centric and open architecture. So we introduced one lake. Think about one lake as one drive, but for your data. And the reason we introduced one lake is because data lakes are pretty messy and complicated. They're nothing more than storage accounts provisioned by your developers. With one lake, you get a single unified SaaS data lake for your entire organization. The second part of this is the open part. Microsoft surprised the industry by announcing that we're moving away from proprietary data formats into completely open source data formats based on Apache Parquet and Delta Lake. Right? That's built into the code of Fabric. You build a data warehouse in Fabric, guess what? The data by default is saved in Delta Parquet. Power BI's native format is also shifting to Delta Parquet. So you point Power BI at the data warehouse, Power BI doesn't even need to send SQL queries anymore. It simply treats the data as if it's already important to Power BI. It simply pages into that into memory. So you get massive performance acceleration. You also get a significant reduction in costs. Right? So we moved away from proprietary data formats into open formats so that you never have to feel like you're locked into Microsoft. And we spent the last couple of years optimizing the performance of Power BI, of our data warehouse, of our real-time database, so they give you screaming fast performance on completely open source data formats. The third promise is really about empowering every business user. And you know, what's the point of data sitting beautifully in your lake if nobody's using it? And this is where Power BI comes into the picture, because all of the data in Fabric, all of the data in one lake through Power BI gives you great analytics experiences. And Power BI also serves as the bridge into Office 365. So the data in Fabric is built into Excel. It's built into Teams. It's built into PowerPoint. It's built into SharePoint. It's everywhere where your customers are. And finally, all of Fabric is AI powered, which means you get great co-pilot experiences, some of which Amanda showed you, but there's more experiences coming that we'll be demoing later in this presentation, but also making it really easy for you to get generative AI capabilities on your data with all of the security intact. So this is, these are the four promises of Fabric, and this is what Fabric looks like. So what you see on top of each of the Fabric workloads, data factory with hundreds of connectors to many different data sources, helping you bring data in, reshape it, get it ready for analytics. Data engineering, a first-class Spark experience that absolutely delights your users, starts up in a few seconds. A data science experience backed by Azure AI. A great data warehousing experience uh, you know, where it's been redone with screaming fast performance on completely open source data formats. A great real-time experience for data coming from your IoT sensors, your application telemetry that is streaming in near real time, Power BI, which you know and love, and then a new product data activator that we will demo later, later in this presentation, and all of this working on top of one lake. Now, what we're doing is we're making sure that even as we make, build all of these products, uh, they, these workloads, they look and feel and work as a single integrated product. So as you see the demos are on Fabric today, you will see that it doesn't feel like we're using eight different products. It looks and feels and works as a single integrated product. But we do want to give you persona-optimized experiences so your data scientists feel at home, your data warehousing people feel, feel at home, your BI professionals feel at home, your business analysts feel, feel at home. 
So let me just show you, you know, how easy it is to get started with Microsoft Fabric. So I'm just going to go in. And this is my actual desktop that I use at work every single day. And what you can see here is my actual Power BI experience. So I've logged in. It should be very familiar to all of you. This is what your Power BI experience looks, at as well, looks like as well. So over the last few months, we have upgraded 360,000 organizations around the planet, except the very few that said, you know, that, uh, that said no. But we have upgraded pretty much everybody into the Fabric experience. So what you'll notice here is if I go to the bottom left, and I'm going to zoom in a bit so you can see better, you will see that there's a new Power BI icon on the bottom left. Now, this did not exist a few months ago. This shows me that, I'm, uh, uh, that I've actually upgraded the Fabric. Now, if I click on the Power BI uh, icon, you will see that all the Fabric workloads show up right here. Okay? Now, let me click into Microsoft Fabric, and what you'll see here is all of the Fabric workloads that I show you are right here. So if I want to bring data into one lake, if I want to bring data into Fabric, all I do is I click on Data Factory. And using Data Factory, I can build data flows to bring data in and reshape it with Power Query experiences. I can build pipelines. I can, I can work with data. But let's say I want to build a data warehouse. I simply go into Data Warehouse, and I can create a new data warehouse right here. It's that simple. Right? And let's say instead, let's say I want to build a machine learning model. I go into Data Science, and I can build models. I can build experiments right here. And let's say I want to just click on, start a new notebook. I just click on Notebook, and you'll just see that the notebook experience starts up within a few seconds, and I'm ready to go. I did not configure any, you know, any virtual machines. I did not configure any clusters. I'm now ready to write my Python code. Right? So we've really brought the simplicity and the integration of Power BI into the entire data stack. So that just gives you a taste of how easy it is to start with Fabric. Now, I'm going to give you a quick tour of the different components of Fabric, and we'll go into a few of the components so you get a taste of what the components look like. You'll also see some demos of how Fabric actually works. And let's start with one lake, because one lake is really the core of Fabric. It, with one lake, what we're trying to do is give you a single unified SaaS data lake, software as a service data lake, for your entire organization. It's one drive, but for your data. Okay. Now, just like one drive always exists, one lake always exists. Everybody that is using Power BI today, you already have access to one lake. There's nothing for you to configure, nothing for you to provision. It just exists. It's already available. Okay. Now, by default, just like Word, PowerPoint, Excel, put their data into one drive, by default, all of the workloads in Fabric put their data into one lake. Now, even though it's a single unified SaaS data lake, it doesn't mean that all the data lives in one place. You can choose to have data live in Europe. You can have data live in India. You can have data live in the US. It does respect your geographical preferences. Okay? But all of the data in one lake is automatically organized in an intuitive hierarchical namespace. It's automatically indexed. There's a built-in lineage. There's a built-in data catalog. It integrates with Purview. All of these things just work. Okay? So that's how you want to think about one lake. Now, if you want to think about getting data into, uh, into one lake and data into Fabric, that's exactly what Data Factory is for. Right? So with Data Factory, what we've done is we've really combined two different technologies from Microsoft. One is Power Query. Who here uses Power Query? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we've taken the simplicity and ease of use of Power Query, and we have combined it with the scale of Azure Data Factory and delivered that into a single unified SaaS experience. Right? So this is, that's what Data Factory is about. Now, Data Factory ships with over 170 different connectors to pretty much any system that you use. Cloud systems, on-premise systems, all of that just works. And as part of Data Factory, we're shipping Dataflows Gen 2. Now, what Dataflows Gen 2 does, it allows you to connect to the 150 different sources. It allows you to use the familiar Power Query uh, experience with 400 plus data transformations that allow you to reshape your data and bring it to one lake or reshape the data already in one lake. It just works, right? It uses the scale of Fabric compute against all of your data. So instead of using Power Query just to bring the data into Power BI, you can actually bring the data into Fabric, and it works out of the box. To show you the new uh, uh, Dataflows Gen 2, I'm going to invite Michaela DeBoer um, to give you a demo of the new Dataflows Gen 2 experience. Michaela, come on over. Thank you, Aaron. So let me walk you through Dataflows Gen 2, the next generation of Power BI Dataflows that makes it super easy for you to ingest data into the Fabric One Lake. So Dataflows Gen 2 has the familiar Power Query editor. So you have all the familiar tools for transforming your data and in getting to your data. Similar as that Amanda has showed in the previous demo, you can connect to the 175 data sources directly from Dataflow Gen 2 
We have also focused a lot on making productivity and discoverability easier for you, so you can connect to your recent sources or just connect to the 175 supported data sources that we have. To really focus more on improving your productivity, we um, shipped a Power Query template in Dataflow Gen 2. With this, you can easily reuse complex Power Query logic, share it with others, and also build on top of the work of others. Using column profiling, I can quickly get insights into my data. And with smart suggestions, I can clean my data in seconds. Power Query has a lot of AI-powered functionalities built into the product. For example, if I'm doing complex transformations, like doing a merge, Power Query can actually help me by suggesting which key columns I can use, making it much simpler for me to actually apply these like, complex transformations. But the most exciting new thing to increase your productivity has to be Copilot. And so with the introduction of Copilot in Dataflow's Gen 2, it can actually help me to transform my data much easier and quicker. By using natural language, I can actually tell Power Query or tell the Copilot to apply transformations to my data. And it can actually add new transformations to my query, like filtering these rows. I can also ask more complex tasks to Copilot, like, for example, creating a date table, which can be a very tedious task. So Copilot can actually create a completely new query for me with more than 11 transformation steps. The last thing I want to show is that I can also describe my queries as well. So if I'm like a more of a new user inside of Power Query, or if I have the product used for a long time, and I just want to recap what my queries were about, I can just quickly ask Copilot to describe it. Uh, Dataflow Gen 2 also become like much faster for applying um, complex transformations. Powered by uh, Fabric Compute, it is actually able to process much more data and execute your queries faster. The last thing that I want to show you that I'm very excited about is the addition of data destinations. Uh, with this, Power Query really became like an ETL tool where you can load your data to different destinations, including lake houses, warehouses, KQL databases, but also non-fabric destinations like Azure SQL and more, all within a no-code, easy experience to configure this. Thank you. So with Dataflow's Gen 2, you get a full ETL or ELT solution where you can simply use the power of the simplicity of Power Query with the scale of Azure Data Factory all built into Fabric just with a few clicks. Okay. But so if you're using, if you have data in the 170 different connectors, then you can use Dataflow's Gen 2. But a lot of you already have data in your existing storage systems. You have data sitting in Azure Data Lake Gen 2. You have data sitting in Amazon S3. You may even have data sitting in Google Storage. Now, if you have data sitting in those systems, you don't want to have to move it. You don't have to go want to copy it. You just want to work with it right there. And that's what shortcuts in uh, Fabric lets you do. So you can create a shortcut. And we already support Azure Data Lake Gen 2. We already support Amazon S3. And support for Google Storage is coming soon. So just create a shortcut. All of Fabric lights up. We don't move or copy the data, but we bring it into the One Lake experience. And all of Fabric, Power BI, everything just lights up. But a lot of you folks here use Power Apps. Some of you use Dynamics 365. So a lot of your data is sitting in Dataverse. Right? And what we're excited to announce today is actually supporting shortcuts for Dataverse in public preview. Right? Woo! Thank you. So to show you how that works, Michaela, back to you. Show us how Dataverse shortcuts work. Absolutely. Let me show you how easy it actually is to set this up. So I am here in my Power Apps environment, and I have a sales data table here that I would like to bring over into Fabric to start my analysis. So all I have to do is select the tables that I want to use, and then use the Link to Microsoft Fabric button to actually link my data between Dataverse and Fabric. So while I do that, the, the link will set up between Dataverse and Fabric. And if I move over to my lake house now, I can actually see the data from Dataverse, the exact same data inside of my lake house. So the data, the data stays in Dataverse, um, but users inside Fabric get secure access to this data now. And even if like, more data gets added to uh, Dataverse or any updates are being made, this is automatically reflected inside the lake house. So this really gives you like a one single source of data. So to build a report, <laughs> so to re build a report on top of this, I can leverage direct lake mode. And so direct lake mode is this new technology in data sets that actually allows you to build reports on huge volumes of data. And it's super easy to do. So with the lake house, there is a data set already created for me that I can use. 
And I can just connect to the data set, build my own report, or also use the auto-create report to quickly build a report in seconds. This way, I just have like visual set up, and I have just like a good starting point for, start for building my report out. So right here, within seconds, I have a report, and I can start querying my data versus data without any latency, super fast. <laughs> Yeah, so with that, I've showed you how you can set this up using shortcuts, linking your data from Dataverse to Fabric. Um, back to you, Arun. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michaela. You know, shortcuts make things really simple. Don't move a copy of data, just create a shortcut. Everything just works up, well, lights up. And don't you love Power BI's direct lake mode? You know, the, you don't have to worry about importing data anymore. You don't have to worry about refreshes. You know, the data in one lake in Delta Parquet format acts as if it's already imported into Power BI, gives you blazing fast performance and no latency. Okay. Now, let's talk about the next workload in Fabric. And now we're going to go into the data science and machine learning workload. Now, this is top of mind for everybody because with the growth of AI, every one of us, if you're not already skilled up, we're trying to get skilled up. And we're making it really, really easy in the data science experience in Fabric backed by Azure AI. One of the exciting new capabilities that we're announcing today is Semantic Link. Okay. So let me tell you what Semantic Link is about. The worlds of BI and AI have been separate forever. Semantic Link brings them together. Let me explain how. Now, all of you have put in a lot of work on many of your Power BI data sets. You've cleansed the data, you've built the models, you've made it beautiful, you've defined a ton of your business logic in measures in Power BI. Now, wouldn't it be nice to be able to reuse the Power BI dataset as you're building machine learning models? That's exactly what Semantic Link provides. So as we show you the power of Semantic Link, I'm excited to invite Nelly Gustafson, who will show you what Semantic Link is about and show you how easy we're making data science in the Fabric experience. Nelly, over to you. Thank you, Arun. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to tell you more about Semantic Link today. All right, so here, we're in a Power BI report. It's showing you sales and revenue data broken down by product category, right? And you've seen this type of data before, I'm sure. But what if you, as BI creators, could enrich this data with predictive insights in a quick and easy way? So let's do that. Let's add sales forecast to this data. Now, with Fabric, you're going to get the tools to be able to do this. And if we jump over to a Python notebook, I'm going to walk you through how you can leverage semantic link to, to do this. Python Notebook, I don't know how many of you would work with Python and Notebooks, is basically a code authoring tool, right? That allows you to create code, document, visualize code. And you can also work with data. That's the whole point. So you can easily work with your data in one lake when you're working from a notebook. You can also schedule notebooks and run them, et cetera. But even if you haven't used notebooks a lot before, don't worry, because we have Copilot, and Copilot's got your back. So with Copilot, you can start exploring these new features, whether you don't use Python or, or Semantic Link. So in this case, we are super excited, as Arun mentioned, to launch the public preview of Semantic Link today. And we're actually going to use Copilot to help us get started with Semantic Link. So for example, we can start asking Copilot, how can we explore our data in a Power BI data set that was feeding the report that we just saw, and then work with that data in Python? So we're going to ask Copilot, how can I explore data in a Power BI data set from a notebook? And in this way, even if you're not a Python developer, Copilot can help you to get started, get familiar with new concepts, kind of to see in this case, you know, you probably want to start with listing the various different data sets you have access to, right? So we can do that too. We can ask Copilot, how can I list the Power BI data sets in my workspace? Copilot can return code to you. You can use this code. You can add this code back to a notebook cell, and you can run it. And here you see that we're listing the various different data sets we have access to. Now we're going to add a code cell, and we're going to continue to use Copilot. But this time in the cell, we're going to type percent percent %code to generate code and say, I want to list the tables in my data set. And in a similar way, Copilot is going to generate that code for us, and we're going to be able to run it and start exploring our, our Power BI data set, right? And this can be for any task. It can be for machine learning model training. This can be for anything else. So this was a simple task. Now, this is the data set superstore that we wanted to explore. Now, let's go back to the forecasting problem we were talking about, right? So I showed you how Semantic Link could give you all these APIs to, to work with your data. 
But what if you could run DAX expressions in a notebook? Well, you can now with Semantic Link. You can actually run DAX expressions and, and get the data you want, get that out in a data frame. And why is this so important? Well, now you can use Python as a complete new set of tools to start exploring that data. You can visualize that data. You can work with it uh, in any way that you want. You can learn new skills. You can use Copilot along, along the way. But most importantly, you can access the measures in your data. We also give you Python functions to evaluate your measures. You can test and validate your data in notebooks this way. You can even train machine learning models. Uh, this time, we're using a library called Profit, no longer Semantic Link, but you can kind of exchange and use mix and match these libraries, write your predictions, in this case forecasts, back in one lake, and then through the direct lake capability in Power BI and Fabric, you can now tap into the forecast and all this enriched data that you had in one lake, and boom, you have it in your report, you can uh, update your charts, you can put the forecasts in, right? So to summarize, Thank you. Very exciting, right? So to summarize, we basically started off in Power BI. You know your data set. You know your tables. You know your measures. Use Python. Explore that data. Enrich it with machine learning if you want to. Use Copilot to help you. And then write your enriched data back into one lake. And with Direct Lake, you can close the circle, right? So I really hope all of you feel empowered. All of you BI creators in this room feel empowered to try out Semantic Link. Give it a shot. Uh, enrich your data. I'm, I know you can do wonders with it. Thank you so much. Yeah. And back to your room. Thank you so much, Nelly. You know, with the work we're doing with data science and fabric, really giving you, you know, an integrated SaaS experience, a built-in co-pilot, low-code experiences and semantic link, we're hoping to really bring the worlds of AI and BI together and create a lot of new data scientists for whom data science is just too hard today. Okay. So let's talk about the final workload that we're going to cover in today's presentation, and that's Data Activator. Right? Um, so here's something. So we, I'm excited to announce that today we're opening up the broad public preview of Data Activator. Every one of you can try it today. Okay. So, so let me tell you what Data Activator is about. Now, here's what I do pretty much every morning. Okay, I wake up, I open up a bunch of my Power BI reports to see what's going on. And then once I find something that's interesting, I typically take an action. Often it's notifying somebody, shooting off an email, asking a question. And, and often, many times through the day, I'm doing that over and over again. I'm sure that resonates with all of you, right? How many of you guys typically open up Power BI dashboards many times during the day and actually take some kind of action? Make some noise, yeah? <laughs> So what we're trying to do with Data Activator is why should humans be the only people watching data? Why can't software watch data? Right? So with Data Activator, we're making it really easy to watch any data. It could be any data sitting in one lake, in a data warehouse or a lake house. It could be data sitting in a Power BI data set. It could be data streaming in from your IoT systems. It could be data streaming in from your application telemetry. And then you can tell Data Activator what to look for, you know, patterns to look for in your data. For example, warehouses running out of inventory, you know, sensors that might be overheating, salespeople who might be missing quota. You know? It could be any one of these things. Right? You can tell Data Activator what to look for, and when it finds that pattern in your data, what business action to take. Now, the action might be as simple as notifying somebody on email or Teams, or it might be kicking off a business process with Power Automate with 1,000 plus connectors, or it could be kicking off an Azure function or a stored procedure. It could be anything, right? We're really trying to bring the worlds of insight to automated action really, really close together. And we're trying to give you all of this power through a no-code experience that is just built into Fabric. So to show you a live demo of Data Activator, I'm excited to invite Will Thompson on stage. Will, come on over. Thank you, Ray. Good morning, everybody. Hi, I'm going to get unlocked here, and we can get started. OK. So if any of you have visited London recently, you probably have seen these bicycles whizzing around the city that are available for rent. Whenever I go back and visit my family, I love using them to travel around. And you pick them up, do your, do your journey, drop them off at a destination whenever you get there. And these docking stations are distributed all over the city. There's over 800 of them around there. And Transport for London, who operate these bikes, 
actually make a stream of data available that tells you where the bikes are, how many are available, how many empty docking stations there are any, in any street or neighborhood. And we're going to use that data today and use Data Activator to build some alerts and some operational systems to make sure there are bikes available for people wherever they are uh, and the docking stations have got those available. So to start off, I'm actually going to start in EventStream. So EventStream is kind of the front door for streaming data into Fabric. You can think of it like Power Query, but for streaming data. And you can see here we've um, pulled some data in from the uh, docking station API, and I'm pushing it out into a number of different data activator reflexes. Those data activator reflexes are where we manage the triggers and alerts and the models that we're working on with this streaming data. So you can see one here. I've got the data streaming in in real time. In the middle here, it's flashing up in green as new events are being received. And to build some alerts on top of this, what I need to do is tell Data Activator, how do I identify one of these bike points of these docking stations, what conditions I'm looking for, and then what actions I want to take as a result. So to start off, I'm going to go create a new docking station object. I am going to spell that right. And I'm going to choose a, uh, the key column. So the bike point ID is what I uniquely identifies these docking stations. And I can choose the other columns out of the data, out of the events that I'm interested in. So things like the number of bikes, how many empty slots there are, uh, and what neighborhood or street they're in. And this is going to take me over to design mode and build that object for me and take the data out of these, those raw events and build them into these properties that I can then use. So if I select the bike count property here, I'll see for a selection of those docking stations the number of bikes going up and down as people take them in and out. So we've selected a sample of five of the docking stations here. There's 100 or so that we're tracking, but this could scale up to hundreds of thousands or even millions of objects in a really large scale system. So now let's build a trigger. So these triggers are what are used to create these alerts and monitor that data. And what I have to do is tell their track data, what's the data that I want to select out of these events, what conditions I want to detect, and what actions I want to take. So I start off by selecting that bike count property. And then I say, OK, what's the condition we're looking for? I could do things like when the value becomes greater than or less than something, when it exits or enters a range, or even if it just changes to or from a particular value. In this case, I care about when the number of bikes that are available uh, becomes less than or equal to, let's say, two. By default, it's going to alert me each time that happens across all these docking stations. But I could e equally say, only alert me when it happens a certain number of times in, say, an hour or when it crosses below that threshold of two and stays there for 10 minutes or 15 minutes or whatever you need to. That can help just reduce the amount of noise in the system and make sure that you're only sending alerts when it's worthy of your attention. I can see that for the two uh, bike points that were sampled here, there were a couple of times that this trigger would have fired. And at the bottom, this chart shows me the number of times across all of the docking stations that we're monitoring, how many times those triggers would have fired over the last four, uh, four hours or so. So I can see there's a bit of a spike here. Uh, a few hours ago, uh, but generally this looks like a, you know, it's a manageable number of alerts for me. So the final thing is what action do I want to take? I can send an email, send a Teams message, or even kick off a custom action using Power Automate, and I'll come back to that in a little while. I'll start off with a Teams message. Uh, you can see it fills in my details, and I can type in uh, you know, a headline for what I want to put in the, uh, in the message. I can use these curly brackets to go and pull out values from the other properties in the events that I'm looking at. And I can choose other information that I want to send through so that I've got context in these alerts uh, to understand what's happened. So let's send a test. Can't guarantee this is going to um, pop up. Oh, oh, well, OK, where is my Teams gone? I'm going to go find that. Come back. There we go. There's the test actions already come through. Tells me there's not enough bikes in Wellington Road. Tells me when the trigger fired, uh, what neighborhood it was in, how many bikes there are, et cetera. And I'm getting that alert straight away. So everything looks good. Let's go back to my trigger. I can hit start and have that monitoring that data in the background. So in just a couple of clicks, in just a couple of minutes, I've built these operational alerts on top of streaming data using Data Activator. Dead simple. There you go. Applause for that. Good. Now, now, I'm sure not everybody in this room has got streaming data that they could use like that, but I bet. The vast majority of you got Power BI reports. Anybody got a Power BI report they want to put an alert on? Yeah, good. OK, great. So we can do that as well. So I've got um, uh, the same streaming data being brought into a Power BI data set, and I've combined it with some information from our data warehouse or from OneLake. You know, you can use Power BI to do whatever you need to in terms of bringing that data together. 
and also use then all the modeling and DAX and the like capabilities on top of that to enrich that data and, and produce the values you need. So I have this occupancy rate measure, which has done some calculations, and that's what I want to be alerting on here. So I come to the visual that, I've, uh, that shows me the information I need, and I can choose this trigger action option. So you'll all see this available soon in the next couple of days as this public preview rolls out, that you'll be able to go create an alert here to say, what's the measure that you want to monitor? I'm going to do it for each street, so I can see the two streets in this visual that I care about. The filters and slices from this report are going to apply to the trigger as well. And then I choose how often do I want the, uh, uh, the, the, the query to run to check this data. So I'm going to do it every five minutes. This is relatively fast-moving data. But if, it was, if your data is just refreshing once a day, that's fine. We'll just check it once a day. Choose what threshold you care about. So in this case, I want to know when that occupancy rate goes over 80%. And then choose where to save the alert. So now this is going to go and add that reflex trigger back into the docking station's uh, reflex that I created. It's going to wire it up to the Power BI data set, set that query up, and set up a, uh, a schedule for it to start uh, querying the data. And then if I come back into, uh, into Data Activator, we can just check everything's right uh, before we start the alert. And I'll be able to see the data as it flows through. We'll bring in the history of the data from that visual too. Uh, and we can check that the, the email is set up properly to send the message. OK, so we can see the email at the end here. Uh, it's already been configured, and it's showing me, hey, that was the, the threshold that I'd set. Um, you can also see here in this optional message, we have a link back to the Power BI report. So when you receive the alert, it's dead easy to get back to the report so you can see the context and why that alert fired while you're getting that trigger. If I check up at the top, you can see here's the data that's brought in for those same two streets. Uh, and in fact, I expect the, oh no, OK, so it, it wouldn't have fired over the last few hours, but um, that's just this, this, this the, the data. It's the danger of doing this live. It's like, I don't know what the data is going to come through uh, based on people how you're using these bytes. So yeah, dead simple. You see how we can now do monitoring and alerting on top of Power BI reports as well. Yeah, helpful? Great. OK, so the last demo that I want to show you here is how we can use Data Activator to trigger Power Automate workflows and kick off actions that can make changes in your business operations as well. And to simulate this, um, I've got a Power Automate workflow here where it's listening for the Data Activator trigger to fire. And it's just going to drop in a to-do item. You can think about those bikes and the sensors that might be on those bikes tracking GPS and accelerometers and uh, how those bikes are performing, streaming information up to the cloud, up to Data Activator. And then we're going to launch maintenance requests, log maintenance requests if things are going wrong. For example, if we see some excessive vibration on the bikes or something, then we might want to log one of these maintenance requests. Now, obviously, using Power Automate, we could use the hundreds of connectors that are out there and drop, these, uh, uh, drop something into any different system that you might want to connect to. I'm just using to do as a, a simple example. And I'm passing through some uh, context from those alerts. You can see the, the uh, instance that fired it, when the uh, trigger activated, et cetera. I think we'll leave it there. Seriously, come past the booth. I'd love to speak to you more about it. Thank you very much. Thank you. You know, I, I love Will doing demos because he's not only a great product leader and he's a great demoer, but he also has this really nice British accent that makes everything seem so much better. <laughs> so, um, you know, if you looked at what Will showed you, you know, to do something like that today, what you have to do is do something like stand up a Kafka cluster, a Spark streaming job, run a, write a whole bunch of code to be able to do what Data Activator just does out of the box. So we're taking this enormous power and giving it to everybody in this audience here today. You don't have to worry about Spark streaming. You don't have to worry about Kafka clusters. It just works. And it's also based on the real-time engine in Fabric that already works at massive scale. To give you a sense of the scale at which the real-time engine on Fabric works, some of the largest customers using this today ingest about 70 petabytes of data every single day. Right? So it'll scale to your largest needs. So what you're seeing here is we made a whole bunch of announcements today on Power BI as well as Fabric. Okay? And just as a quick reminder, Data Activate is available right now today for you to try it out. Okay? Uh, we're also innovating on Fabric at a really, really fast cadence. So we ship a new release, a bunch of features, a new release of Fabric every single week, right? A whole bunch of new capabilities roll out every single week. And every month, we take all of the capabilities we shipped in that particular month and roll up into an all-up Fabric blog. And what you see here is the Fabric blogs for July, for August, for September. 
And these are not tiny updates. These are not a feature here or feature there. These are chunky updates. And I love this quote from Andy Cutler, because each one of these blogs over that month is over 50 to 60 pages long. So tons of innovation shipping every single week, just like you're used to in Power BI. Now, if that's what we're doing, if you want to look forward to the capabilities that are coming in Fabric over the next six months, what I'm excited to announce is that just today morning, we published the Fabric release plans. So it's available here. <laughs> it's about 60 to 70 pages of line item detail of all the capabilities that we're shipping across all of Fabric over the next six months. Please check it out. We just published it today morning. So hopefully, you got a quick overview of Fabric and you, you, you know, you're really excited about uh, you know, all the capabilities that we're bringing together and all of the power that we're putting in your hands. Okay. But then the question that's probably on your mind is how do you get access to all of this? How do you take advantage of Fabric? How do you take it for a test drive? Right. And there's a whole bunch of good news here. Now, if any of you are using Power BI Premium, and I know there's a whole bunch of folks here, the good news is there's nothing for you to buy. You already have it. Right. So that's right. Power BI Premium, the exact SKU that you use today, is already Fabric enabled. That means you can build data factory pipelines, that you can build machine learning models. You can use Data Activator. It just works. It's available today. Now, some of you might say, well, Arun, I'm using my Power BI Premium capacity for some important workloads. I don't want to use that capacity. Is there another option? Yes, there is. So if you can actually buy a Fabric capacity SKU, and the Fabric capacity SKU starts at F2. And guess what? The F2 SKU starts at just 36 cents per hour, right? Just 36 cents per hour on a pay-as-you-go model. You use it for a whole day, it's less than the price of a cup of coffee. Right? So that's available to you today. So that's, you, can, you, you can use that. Okay? Now, what if you don't have a, you know, a credit card, if you don't want to use Azure, and you just want to give Fabric, um, uh, Fabric a try? What's exciting is that we are, a 60-day free trial for Fabric is available for you. There's no credit card required, no Azure subscription required. All you need is your actual Azure Active Directory ID, which if you're using Power BI or Power Platform or Office, you already have. So it just should take you less than 15 seconds to sign up for a free trial. You will be able to use it today. Fabric trial capacities are immediately available. And the SKU that we're making available to you in the capacity is not our starting SKU. It's not the F2 SKU, but it's the F64 SKU that has a ton of capability. And just to give you a sense of what the F64 SKU does, if you were to purchase the F64 SKU uh, on a pay-as-you-go model, it's about $8,000 a month, right? So you'll be, be making $16,000 of value available for every developer just within 10 seconds, right? That's available today. So that's pretty much what I had to cover, folks. That's the, hopefully, you got a sense of where we're going with Power BI. Hopefully, you got a sense of where we're going with Fabric. It's been an awesome few days here at the Power Platform Conference. My big ask to you is that if you haven't tried Fabric already, just go to this URL, try Fabric today. It's super easy. You'll find that your Power BI experiences translate over. It's very, very easy to get a trial. You will be blown away. Thank you so much. Enjoy the final day of the conference. <laughs>